Okay, dear students, uh, we are studying gas turbine, and I'll be teaching you gas turbine right now in the continuing lecture. You can see this is the Breton cycle in front of you. In the Breton cycle, you have one to two higher compression process, two to three higher constant uh, pressure heat addition, three to four expansion process in the turbine. And 4 to 1 is the heat rejection process in a heat exchanger. You can see here in the thermal efficiency, the energy balance, Q in minus Q out plus W in minus W out equal to H exit, H exit minus H inlet. That means that comes from the equation Q is equal to W plus delta U that you got in this uh, thermodynamics in the steady flow process, Q is equal to W plus delta U. There is in a steady flow process or in a closed system. This is the formula. Using that, we have Q in is equal to H3 minus H2. You can see H3 minus H2 in the curve. That is Cp into T3 minus T1, T3 minus T2. Cp into T3 minus T2 because it is a constant pressure curve. So, Cp, specific heat at constant pressure into T3 minus T2. So, that is T3 minus T2 here showing the delta T that comes from the formula MCP delta T and H is equal to you know CP delta T H is, H is equal to enthalpy taking that into consideration you have taken CP into T3 minus T2 Q out that is the rejected heat is equal to that is H4 minus H1 H4 is enthalpy at the point 4 H1 is the enthalpy at the point 1. So, that gives you Cp into T4 minus T1. That gives basically Cp into Cp into T4 minus T1. This one is being shown here. The thermal efficiency of the Brighton cycle is given by here is also another equation you have seen T2 by T1 equal to P2 by P1 to the power K minus 1 by K. That formula comes from isentropic equation. The isentropic equation is process 1 to 2 and process 3 to 4. These are isentropic processes. The processes have been already discussed in the first lecture of this chapter about Brayton cycle and we are continuing with that process. So, thermal efficiency of Brayton cycle is W net by Q in. Matlab, work, net work done divided by heat input. It is basically thermal efficiency is thermal output by thermal input. So, we are taking W net is the output, Q in is the input. That is Q that if we take it Q in minus Q out divided by Q in. W net is Q in minus Q out. That is the heat has come in minus heat has gone out. The difference of that is the work done, net work done. That is what they mean. So, taking that into consideration, Q in minus Q out divided by Q in, that is 1 minus Cp into T4 minus T1, this is the all equations. And from that equation, we get efficiency of Brayton cycle 1 minus 1 by Rp to the power k minus 1 by k. k is equal to k is Cp by Cv. If you remember, this all come from the thermodynamic formula. I am going not going to explain this here because this is ICGT. You know, efficiency of a Brayton cycle has found out has been one minus one by R p to the power k minus one by k. Now k is sometimes referred to as gamma. That is as a specific ratio, specific heat ratio of air, or we can men mention it as k. R p is the pressure ratio. Pressure ratio is P2 by P1. You can see P2 by P1 in the curve. P2 by P1 is the pressure ratio. Taking that into consideration, we get, we can find from the curve, eta TH Breton is directly proportional to RP. The efficiency, thermal efficiency of Breton is directly proportional to RP or directly proportional to the pressure ratio. That means, if the pressure ratio increases, if the pressure ratio increases, then 
thermal efficiency of Brayton cycle increases. That means if P2 by P1 increases, the thermal efficiency of Brayton cycle increases. I'll show you in the next uh, slide how it is going to happen so that you can follow this slide nicely. We have in this, this is parameters affecting thermal efficiency. You can see along x axis of the curve there is a pressure ratio Rp, along the y, x, y axis of the curve there is thermal efficiency. Now, as pressure ratio increases the thermal efficiency also increases. You can see that from this diagram. If pressure ratio increases, the thermal efficiency also increases. Actually, does it happen so? Yes, it happens so. See this formula, the last chapter formula, this formula. Eta Th Bratton equal to 1 minus Rp by K minus Rp to the power K minus 1 by K. If value of Rp increases, 1 by Rp decreases. That means, 1 minus this portion, this delta portion of 1 minus this whole value increases. Got the point, na? Rp is the denominator, 1 is the numerator. If Rp increases, 1 by Rp decreases. 1 by Rp decreases means 1 minus 1 by Rp increases. That means, Breton cycle efficient, thermal efficiency increases. That means, we come back to this point again. If the pressure ratio P2 by P1 is increased, as a result, the thermal efficiency of the Breton cycle also increases. If efficiency P2 by P1, the pressure ratio increases, the thermal efficiency of Breton cycle also increases. Here it is shown in this diagram. The pressure ratio Rp increasing, you see the thermal ratio of the Breton cycle is also increasing in the curve. If you take the reading at point 0.5, it is at uh, pressure ratio 5, it is around 0.25, the thermal efficiency. At the pressure ratio 10, it is around 0.45. So, in this way, with increased pressure ratio, the thermal efficiency of Breton cycle continuously increases. As it is evident from the last. Uh, equation as we have seen, seen here. That means, if you come to this diagram, if you increase P2 by P1, this TS diagram you can see, if you increase P2 by P1, as a result of increase of P2 by P1, the pressure ratio P2 by P1, if you increase as a result of that, the efficiency of the cycle will increase. That means, what is that? If we provide a better compression ratio, that is a high power compressor if it is provide, provided in the system, 1 to 2 is a compression process. If we provide a high power compression in the system, as a result of that, the efficiency of the Breton cycle increases. That means, it is always expected we put a high power compressor, where the output of the compressor is more, much more as compared to input. Actually, it does not happen much more. It remains less than input, but the percentage increase is more with respect to input. That means, a better efficiency compressor will give a better thermal efficiency of the Breton cycle. You understood, no? There are, in the cycle, there are things like 1 to 2 compression, 2 to 3 heat addition in a heat exchanger, 3 to 4 is the pressure and temperature drop in the turbine and 4 to 1 is the 4 to 1 is the heat dissipation at the heat exchanger. These are all the processes. Out of all the processes, if I increase the compressor output at 1 to 2, the thermal efficiency of Bratton cycle increases tremendously. You can see with a small increase in pressure ratio, a large increase in thermal efficiency of Breton cycle in the curve. It is evident in the curve. You can see in the curve itself. Now, improvements of gas turbines performance. The early gas turbines which are used has a limited use. 
limited use though it has a versatility of using different fuels you can use gases as a fuel you can use uh, steam as a fuel you can use different materials as a fuel which is combustible material and because it's thermal efficiency but its thermal efficiency is found to be only 17% only 17% thermal efficiency means what output by input is very low that means if you provide a large amount of output the input coming was very low sorry if you provide a large amount of input the output coming was very low large amount of input means your fuel cost is absolutely high you need a need a high amount of fuel but the power obtained from the turbine is much less so because of that reciprocating engines were used for much of the period in the earlier days the reciprocating engines were used but with the following developments is shown here the trend has changed number 1 increase in the turbine inlet or firing temperatures the turbine inlets have increased steadily from about 540 degree centigrade in 1940s to 1425 degree centigrade even higher today that is around three fold rise of the inlet temperature in the turbine higher the turbine inlet temperature better is the work done in the turbine better is the work output of the turbine because of better rotation of the turbine blades what is done in a turbine high temperature high pressure steam or gas enters the turbine and rotates the turbine and as a result of that power output is produced in the turbine so we increase the temperature inner ten, inside temperature coming at the uh, turbine inlet temperature at the coming at the turbine and at the same time with the temperature there is a sufficient pressure rise so high pressure high temperature steam enters the turbine does a much better rotation of the turbine and output of the turbine increases better rotation of the turbine means better output why better output better rotation of the turbine means better movement of the magnet at the end of the turbine shaft within an armature coil so better the movement of the magnet in the armature coil higher is the current production or power production so this is the way one in which we have increased the turbine temperature and we have got the result as a result of that number 2 increasing the efficiencies of turbo machinery components turbines compressors etc different turbo machinery components like turbines compressors we are increasing the uh, efficiencies of the turbo machinery components the advent of component components of the uh, computer aided design made it possible to design these components aerodynamically with minimum losses aerodynamically what is aerodynamic movement aerodynamic movement i can give you an example an aeroplane has its nose in an aerodynamic way why the nose is taken in aerodynamic you can see it is a it is a converged structure a convergent structure at the top of the nose because it cuts through the air and this gives a very aerodynamic shape of the engine front the airplane cuts through the air and gives a aerodynamic shape to the engine front you can see the high speed racing cars their front sides are aerodynamically designed so that they can cut the air very easily and move very fast within the air stream so this increases the aerodynamic temperatures that firing in inlet temperatures or increasing the turbo machinery components turbines compressors etc like in case of turbine just like in case of turbines we have better aerodynamically dynamically designed blades of the turbines better aerodynamically designed blades of the turbines will make the steam pass in a better flow through the turbine more surface area being of the blades being exposed to the turbine so there is better pressure drop of the steam the more the pressure drop of the steam higher is the power output of the turbine getting the point na no? 
more the pressure drop of the steam within the turbine higher the power output of the turbine that means it supplies higher current to the power plant and power plant moves rotation of the power plant rotation of the shaft in the power plant is higher higher the rotation of the power shaft in the power plant higher is the current or power production so these are development of design changes in present day technology as compared to the earlier days these changes have shifted the use from reciprocating engines to the gas turbines then we use adding modifications number 3 point adding modifications to the basic cycle like intercooling regeneration and recuperation and reheating now these are different uh, performance increasing parameters these are different additional performance enhancement or efficiency enhancement parameters by which we increase the movement of the turbine we'll take up uh, in the classes Uh, in the in the class right now about this different uh, efficiency increase of the turbine every process written here an intercooling a regeneration or reheating increases the efficiency of the turbine in some way or the other but what you have to remember this efficiency increase by these processes i have mentioned comes at a cost it just doesn't in work as an efficiency enhancer it comes at a cost some power is being used some extra fuel is being used and that is the input whatever extra fuel you are using is come going to input so your out this is your efficiency is output by input the more the input for something the output by input ratio decreases that means the efficiency decreases but using these higher inputs we are getting better efficiency enhancement like intercooling regeneration or reheating we will be describing it in the future of the class but right now you remember these are efficiency in efficiency increasing but to do this we need extra fuel addition or something like that so input increases input cost increases the output also increases now we have to see the output by input ratio whether the increase by our in output by input ratio is more than what it was supposed to be if it is more that can that case we will use this processes of increasing the efficiency of a turbine there are different process of efficiency increasing the efficiency of the turbine we will consider and now again just a review of the what i have taught number 1 initially number 1 point initially in case of turbine inlet there was less temperature only 540 degrees centigrade in present days we have increased it to 1425 degrees centigrade or higher that is more than three times what it was as a result of increase of this temperature a better steam is obtained a high quality steam is obtained or better gas is obtained in case of turbine inlet at the high temperature high pressure steam or gas works better in the turbine and the turbine rotates much better and as the turbine rotates much better the output increases so output by input also increases increasing the efficiency of the turbine number 2 point increasing the efficiencies of turbo machinery components turbines compressors we have increased the design parameters of the turbines and compressors as it was designed in the earlier days now the design is much better turbine blades are designed more aer- aerodynamically to provide with better flow of air to the surface area and as a result of this better flow of air to the surface area there is better movement of the turbine better movement of the turbine results in better output better output means more power more current now as the output increases as a result of that the turbine efficiency increases so we get same gas plant which we are using in earlier days gives a much better output 
in present tense. As the time goes by, you will learn that a gas turbine is a much more alternative option as compared to a reciprocating engine. Now, you are not understanding the concept of the reciprocating engine, what I mean. In case of reciprocating engine, by reciprocation of the piston cylinder arrangement being used by burning of IC engine, say internal combustion, you have read no? that suction, compression, power stroke, exhaust, these are four cycles. These four cycles produce a large amount of power in reciprocating engine. As a result of that, the shaft rotates there also and I can rotate using a diesel or petrol engine, I can rotate the shaft of the turbine also because I want a rotary motion in the turbine, whatever may, way it may come. Now, we have to see the output by input. Output by input of gas turbine in nowadays is much better than the output by input we are getting in case of reciprocating engines. It is very high. So, because these parameters I am telling you, know, increasing the turbine inlet temperature, increasing the efficiencies of turbine components and then adding modifications to the basic cycle like using efficiency enhancement parameters like intercooling, regeneration, reheating, etc. Doing combination of all these things has increased the efficiency of turbine, gas turbine to a large extent as compared to IC engines or reciprocating engines. As a result, nowadays gas turbines are used in case of IC in, in instead of IC engines in power plants. In power plants, large number of gas turbines are used nowadays. That is what I want to mean. Now, we come to the performance enhancing parameters to some of you understand that performance enhancing parameters. You can see here is compression with intercooling. There are two compressors, compressor 1, compressor 2 and in between the compressors there is an intercooler. What is intercooler? It is a cooler which compresses, which cools down the compressed gas in between the two compressors. In compressor 1, the pressure increases from P1 to P2. After it increases to P2, it remains at high temperature and high pressure. What you do with intercooling, you decrease the specific volume of the gas. As you decrease the specific volume of the gas, the work done decreases. The work done in the intercooler decreases. Things will be clear in future classes. As I show you with the PV diagram, pressure volume diagram, how it happens. So, as the work done decreases in the intercooler, then we use the second compressor. So, here are two compressors having lots of input work and giving an output as a result of that. Now, with help of intercooler, we are reducing a lot of compressor work. Now, compressor work is what? It is input. You switch a sw electric switch, compressor starts compressing. That means, you are taking power in, work done on the system, that is negative power. You know this from thermodynamic, work done by the system is positive, work done on the system is negative. So, work done on the system is always a disadvantage. So, work done on the system by compressor work, in the form of compressor work, plays a huge role in the output of the compressor. Because ultimately, the efficiency is output by input. If you increase the input work of the compressor, naturally the output, output by input ratio fails. It drops down. In the equation output by input, input is the denominator. The denominator input increases more 
that means output by input decreases more that means efficiency decreases more so our intention is to reduce compressor work as much as possible we have to reduce the compressor work as much as possible as we reduce the compressor work as a result of that the input will reduce that means in the formula the efficiency of the compressor output by input if the input or the denominator decreases the output in the ratio increases that means the efficiency increases so our intention is to decrease the compressor work and we can decrease the compressor work using intercooler why using intercooler intercooler does a cooling how does it do the cooling you compress the gas from 1 to 2 pass to the intercooler pass cold water to the intercooler as it as the intercooler a cold water is passed through the intercooler cold water means you can use a general water there are two types of water you can use in intercooler one is general water that's normal water by that you do some amount of cooling if you want a better cooling you can use a cooling tower but then cooling tower has a lot of cost in it you have to maintain the cooling tower you have to have the installation cost of the cooling tower you need water from the cooling tower sufficiently and you need a separate pump for the cooling tower so though the efficiency of the compressor will increase much more with the cooling tower you have to see there is cost incurred in the cooling tower running the electrical cost of the cooling tower the cost of the motor running in the cooling tower these work as a negative factor so generally intercoolers are cooled using the generalized water general water which is a general component water we are using and we are using the intercooler as a result of that as a result of intercooling the compressor work decreases the compressor work decreases and as the compressor work decreases as a result of that the output by input ratio increases and compressor efficiency increases so in this way using the intercoolers we are using the compression ratio we are using the compressor with a better efficiency other than intercooling we are using other processes like regenerating reheating all these processes in the next class i will be talking about these will increase the total efficiency of the gas turbine cycle combination of all these processes in a gas turbine cycle increases the total efficiency of the gas turbine cycle the process is very interesting if you see how it works how the intercooler works how the regenerator works how the reheating works in increasing the different stages of uh, gas turbine cycle the increasing the work efficiency of the gas turbine it's very interesting to see and it will work a large extent to your favor to understand the basic concept of engineering what is the basic concept of engineering when you design a system say gas turbine your output by input should be minimum that is the main thing so less the input is higher is the output by input ratio or or increase the output keeping the input same then also the output by input ratio is high that means there are two ways either you decrease the input or you increase the output here using these devices we will try to decrease the input basically as we decrease the input more and more as a result of that automatically output per input ratio becomes better and that's the way a gas turbine works nowadays gas turbine is replaced has replaced all the ic engines being used in power plants gas turbines are highly efficient efficient but gas turbines are not efficient for running a full plant it is generally a top up of the system means if the load is say 100 megawatt the general power plant is taking a load of 90 megawatt another 10 megawatt additional is sometimes required when it is comes to the additional load the gas turbine is done this is how it helps in generating the process this is 
this is the procedure engine this is the end of this class then we will enter the next classes in general